up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Uh, we got a new car park. Um, so, my brother uh, himself, a bull boost shifter. Uh, let me explain. So, all random one day, my brother's car um, freaking, when we had rebuilt the transmission or whatever, we had got him a Megan Racing uh, shifter. And the car ran fine, it has an innovative shift linkage, like the car was shifting great. So one day, literally, look at the shifter. It has like hell up and down movement. And basically what's going on is it's literally falling out of the linkage. Like it's literally falling out the linkage. I checked underneath and there's a plate that holds up the little, it's like a, I guess a joint that holds the shifter in place. And um, in order for me to fix that, I would technically need another plate in place and it's a lot of headache and well, he's been wanting to get the shifter for a long time already so um we just seen a good opportunity to i guess need it now so basically this shifter we explain how it works i don't know why i'm in the car explaining it because the ac is on and i don't want to be outside with the humid but he opted for the whoa shiny for the polished one yeah it's probably gonna get hot but hey it looks cool but here it basically is, um, when they send it to you, they send it to you with this piece right here, the bracket that goes to the chassis itself, um, disassembles in this box, there's all the parts. And then from there, you just have to put on the Allen keys, they can tell they're just hand tight, four holes. Um, this piece is vertical, it doesn't matter which way it tightens on, it's a bearing. From there, they give you the hardware for the four bolts, one, two, three, four. And then also, um, as you can see right here, let's say if you have like one through, or, well like your one through fifth shifting, you see these screws right here? They'll tend to unthread. Then you have like more of like a tight shifter throw from side to side instead of having like this whole side to side plate that's not necessary. Wherever your first is, wherever your fifth is at, you place that right there, you use that locking nut and you keep it in place. And let's say for those people who like to money shift, Let's say you're going from fourth to third, or yeah, third to fourth, and you're afraid of going from second, you can make it so when you tighten this thing in, you'll press the lever, goes in, and you'll have to force that pin to allow you to go into first or second, if that makes sense. So initially, anytime we can leave it as fifth, everything like unlocked, and then for first and second, he has to press that pin into at least going to first. And once he's in set, once he goes to second, it'll already allow him because he's already in that little, I guess, area. But when he goes into third, it'll lock him out of that. So if he ever tries to go back into second, it won't let him. He has to physically press it to go back in. I'll show you guys in the video right now once it's installed how it works. But for the most part, it should be a pretty simple install. And the best part about it is, is he's not gonna use the stabilizer bar anymore. The mechanism is right here. This is the stabilizer bar, the spring, all this stuff right here. This is, is the stabilizer bar. That's why he bought this product. That's why you see it mounting right here. So all he's gonna use is just the actual joint piece that makes you go into gear. And that's how it's gonna work. So it should be a lot shorter shifting, not your shifting. And this is gonna be his whole new shifter now. No more carbon knob or nothing. So rear piece, pretty sweet setup gotta drill some holes for these two front ones i believe or the back ones I'm not quite sure but i'm gonna walk you guys step by step on how it works and the before and after because right now this is uh this is how it is right now like right now it's hitting the exhaust i have to physically pull it up and go into gear and then if i go out push it down see that look. yeah it's annoying in traffic it's i've already had it fall in the exhaust so yeah, go ahead and jack up the car, take out the center console, just take off everything off right here, and we'll get on with the install. Right, so I didn't record take off the linkage because I know there's millions and millions and millions of videos of how to do this. So I'm not gonna do that. But here's the shift that already came apart the first time, just freaking oh, let me get a rag because I'm not holding it like this. Alright, so now I'm gonna set it up for you, Jaime. So you can do so you can be good. But here's the shifter. The shifter isn't the problem. This is a Megan Racing shifter. They're actually really good. But here's the linkage. And that's what would happen. That plate, I don't know how, it just widened out. Like, I don't know. Some people were probably gonna say it's a little bushing spring in there. Well, 
even if that was worn out that just causes like it being worn out in here you know what i mean but the plate is what holds the shifter in place so what that's gonna do is or the shifter is gonna eliminate this whole entire piece because now it's gonna bolt up to the chassis and now it's just gonna bolt up to the actual part that shifts if that makes sense so we're gonna eliminate all this we're gonna eliminate pushing play like everything so the shift should be super notchy and we should have not we should not have this problem anymore so the shift better than mine so i'm just gonna go ahead and uh, go back underneath install a new shifter but we're probably going to drill holes first in the center console all right so don't mind the dirtiness of the inside but this is how we're looking this piece right here as you guys can tell down there is when it is what's going to go into the shifter so we basically have to drill holes for these four holes right here so like i said this bottom plate disconnects from those allen keys or those allen bolts we're gonna go ahead and remove those and just drill right through it if you guys are wondering why this doesn't line up right here it's because well it's probably to be an automatic and i converted it for him to be a five speed so that's why none of these holes right here line up whatsoever you can tell right here in the back also those are the ones we use for the bushings so yeah maybe one day we'll weld them shut but right now we're not gonna do all that extra stuff we're just gonna line it up probably put the linkage on and just line up the holes okay sucks right here but okay so all you have left is this linkage right here this is the one that does all the mahiko we're just gonna line it right up all right man line up the shifter wherever it lands it lands it's gonna be right there you're way off buddy okay right there don't hold it don't move it yeah, so you need to go way more back. Okay, that was kind of a pain in three asses. Piece is on. I'm gonna go ahead and move it. So the way it shifts so smooth is in between the shifter and the linkage, you gotta make sure you put some washers because if not, you just tighten it just like that with nothing on between the sides. You can barely see the washer on that one. Oh, no, you can't, but. I wasn't recorded, but it's kind of a pain to see. But you see a silver piece right in there, kind of. Can you see it? Yeah. So you need to make sure you have washers in there once the time's down, because those washers will press against the bearing and let it shift that smooth. If not, you're going to have a lot of binding issues. And it's just not going to go back and forth. Not the linkage is on, though. Bolt it up. We can go ahead and place the holes, drill them, come back down, and... That'll be it for the install. Then we just have to go touch drive it. See if it bangs some beat tech. Oh, damn. I forgot we had to tighten those bolts right there. Son of a... So the only thing we did run into, like I said, since it's an automatic car, is obviously it doesn't line up perfect. Whoa. It doesn't line up perfect. Right there. So what did you have to do right now, Hannah? You basically had to smack flange on. Right here on the side. Yeah. So you just smack that flange down. That way the whole And now he's just basically drilling it. Because that's taking me where it's gonna land. I let the shifter like fully all the way back, like exactly where it's gonna land. Basically, you wanna have this flat, so about right there should do it. Right there. So we want the shifter perfectly straight. Forward. Slide it up, in my opinion. Slide it straight. Mark our holes, drill them, and you run your new hardware. And that's basically the whole shifter install. All right. So what we did right now is we drilled the two back ones so that when we do the two front ones this is basically early in position it is until it's perfectly straight right there so now when we draw those two this base plate won't even shift anywhere so when we draw the holes it should be exactly where we need them i go underneath tighten it up i'm good to go send it to the moon oh yeah and use a small drill bit first that way if you're changing the bigger drill bit the actual size it doesn't freaking struggle freaking looks sick Hold it in when you leave it loose. Yeah. Oh, damn. You drill like that? Mm -hmm. You bad mother. All right, well, all he's doing now is tightening the, oops, the Allen keys that I forgot under the base plate. Sorry, James. We forgot about that. I thought we didn't remove it, but once you tighten those down, the base plate should be extremely solid. And right now, all we need to do after this is tighten all the hardware from underneath while he does from up top. We're good to go. So hopefully after this, the shifter doesn't fall out mid freeway when I'm driving, because we all love shifters falling when you're driving, right? Just doing a point. Just... I'm hella tired, guys, so if there's no energy in this video, that's why. Or if you can't even hear me, 
that's why I'm exhausted. Maybe some sleep. But this shit should rip. You want the spaces in the bottom right here? On top. You don't want the bolt grinding on the aluminum. That's another thing too. Well, show me the bolt real quick. So you can see what I'm talking about. The harder they provide is basically like this. So when you guys are pushing it or putting it on, you don't want the just the head of the bolt right on the plate. You want to put the washer on it. If not, it's gonna engrave it. Pretty damn nasty. Pretty sick. I like this video if you like being on the cars guys because this sucks. Oh homie has a vicious ass leak. I'm wondering from what because that's pretty fresh, but I guess to give these washers underneath too, obviously for the body of the car. It is gonna be kind of difficult with one hand, but you guys can see the hardware right there. Where is it at? So just put the washer first, then your lock nut, have someone on top, tightening it up, and I'll show you guys another finished product. You could hopefully it's in right. That's what I'm concerned about. All right, go for it, try it. All right, leave it loose a little bit so you can have free play for the rest of them. That one's gonna be kind of a pain in the fucking ass, okay. All right, push the bolt down, push the bolt down. All right, go for it. Shifter, but. Okay, we still on the That's on the table. You guys can tell all the hardware is in. It looks uh, good. Luckily, they have locking nuts, so these shouldn't come off. But all right, time to go up top, adjust the shifter, and go drive this motherfucker. Oh my god, I hate being under here. It's just amazing. You can tell I'm sweating. I love it. I'm using that, bro. You guys can tell, can't go to first, right? That's where these little pins right here on the side are meant for. To prevent you from going into them and you can see them right there so when you press this piece in pull the little pin back right there allowing you go to first many people might wonder why is that so like important one of two things if you ever have like a money shift dish you can basically make it to where once you got a second and go to third like i show right now it'll make you prevent from going to third so you can do it only for first and second or also fit the reverse so I'm gonna just do it for first and second, not fifth and reverse, because I feel like once you're going at that speed, you don't want to have a reason not to go to fifth, but I feel like for first, it's more necessary. But yeah, it feels really smooth. The spring in it, it's nice, but. Very tight. So everything is locked nuts, so it's very good. It's not, it's made so it doesn't um, back off the little adjustable spring. So wherever you set it at, that's where it stays. You wanna hold the actual pin, not twist this like that, because then you can adjust it. That way the locking can stay in good position. First gear right there, right? Yeah. Let's see. Now this one will back up all the way because we don't need it for fifth. We'll just do the same thing. Back it all the way out because look, if we go to fifth, it's allowing us to go to fifth. If I put the pin all the way in, it won't let me go. But I would prefer for fifth not to be locked out fit the reverse in just first and second you guys can do it how you guys please but that's the way i'm gonna do it for his setup i could take out the pin if i would like but i'm gonna leave it in here just in case if i ever want to use it for whatever reason but yeah that's basically how the little pin setup works all right that's the finished result what do we got so how do you go for first that's third first second third fourth fifth reverse basically you cannot go into first unless for spinning and once you're in first you it's not gonna let you like not go into it like you have first and second basically in that little area and then once it releases again you cannot go into it till you release the lock every other gear is available damn any other actual play you might have honestly it's just gonna be the actual joint itself on top but all right, well, time for a test drive. Okay, it's been maybe like three days. So if you guys can't hear me that good, I'm back and I tell you again with the AC on because it's hot outside, yo. But I did want to give you guys a more um, good review on the shifter rather than just installing it. So it's been like three days since we've installed the shifter and here are my thoughts. This thing is great. I honestly have no complaints. The only con I have, to be honest, and that's just a personal thing, like, I just need to go get some Loctite. This little knob right here that you push down to, like, 
I guess, how I said, like, get out of the lockout. And I don't know why, I'm assuming the car has, like, very stiff motor mounts. And, it, like, vibrated at least, you guys can see. But, I mean, it's not, like, a big deal at all, you know. It's, I can, like, put some Loctite on this thing. Or maybe, like, a rubber O-ring around this, you know. And it'll, uh, it'll just tighten up, I guess. But, I mean, besides this, like, this little mishap, something I feel when I'm driving, it'll just come loose. Um, it's great, like, I don't put the clutch in, but like, all the gears are so direct. Right now, I don't have the screw in there. But, uh, I told you guys about for the first gear. Screw in there for the first gear lockout, but uh, I hope in the previous video, or the previous clip, I kind of explained it pretty good. Like literally, you'll see it, the pin will slide back. And if the screw was there, it would not, or well, if the screw was there, like, it would not allow me to go like this to the first gear selection and then i would have to press this to unlock it if that makes any sort of sense but um yeah for my review i mean super notchy very short shifting um i've done you know a good amount of pulls in the car and it feels great i have no complaints i will say though like i said in previous clips is it against the bearing and you will not have this smooth motion of the shifter i've seen it many times not just with this but like with the aftermarket shifters they just tighten them down or they leave them a little loose and uh, you should be able to crank that hardware down as tight as possible and not have any issues also you guys can tell uh, that's not meant to be with the shifter boot we could probably make something but my brother doesn't really care about his interior that much so yeah but with that being said, I hope whoever watches this video got a good understanding of how the shifter works, the install, and the benefits of it. Um, I think it's a great shifter. I would not say, I mean, personally, for those who like daily driving comfort, maybe not so much because it is a little aggressive in my opinion. But I mean, if you want to get it, maybe sell it afterwards. I have the hybrid racing shifter, and that one's really good, and that's very nice for you know daily daily driving. So, yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Time for a teardown.